a lot of areas offensively. Sorry, technical thing here. Yeah, we improved in a lot of areas offensively. Some young guys got some significant playing time as well. Mix and match the O-line as well due to a couple of guys that were nicked up and some other things we saw during the course of the week that we felt would give us an advantage. So all in all, some some positive steps and still plenty of stuff to clean up and get better at. All in all, I guess, let, let me ask you your general uh, you know, opinion of this game in, in kind of a nutshell. We talked about the offense and the, and the rhythm. Uh, you never had to punt today, not once at all, but generally your team's performance. Well, I think, uh, you know, we took control of the game, you know, relatively early. Uh, second quarter, they got a couple of scores, but our defense just immediately came out the second half and shut the door. And when it was 45-14, uh, we started, we wanted to play a lot of guys, guys that were not only backups, but guys down the line a little bit that deserve playing time that are going to possibly have to step up and want to let them play. And some made some really good plays and some other things we got to fix. And then at the end of the game, we just wanted to make sure we closed it out. We let them play as long as we possibly could. And then um, just finish off the game, put some of our guys back in and make sure that we uh, put the game out of reach completely. So all in all, a lot of positive stuff, a lot of stuff to build on. Um, 24 hours on it and looking forward to getting back to work and work on our one and no process again. Well, you look at your last two or three football games for Anthony Brown. He's gotten a little better, a little better, and he's really seeming to get into a rhythm. 307 passing yards, a career high for him. Uh, he had a pretty spectacular day today. Had a really good day. It was really efficient. Um, o line protected him really well. Was accurate. Receivers made some plays as well. Ran the ball well. Also made some really good decisions in the run game, RPO game. Um, really good football game for him and for the offense. And uh, lots of areas we keep getting better at. So it's pretty exciting for us right now. You know, we look at the recruiting and some of the kids, the young men you bring in, and the impacts they're able to make right away. I thought Devin Williams today made some spectacular plays. And how about Byron Cardwell? He's got a little burst to him, doesn't he? Byron played really well. Seven played really well. Saw Troy went up there and caught himself a touchdown. Uh, Devin, certainly every single week, shows more, and there's more in the tank there. we got to keep pushing and challenging him uh, because there's a lot. There's a lot in there, and he's uh, he's going to keep bringing it. I know he is. Uh, and, again, you know, just a lot of guys making plays. Micah made a lot of really good plays as well, really, really effective in the punt return game as well. Um, you know, again, just really proud of a lot of guys and the way that they played, and, Looking forward to getting on that tape, finding areas where we could keep improving. But um, they were excited. They were excited to get out here and play at noon in front of our fans. And they went out there and, and certainly did a lot of things well. You had some guys get banged up today. I know you don't know a lot about them, uh, but anything you can say about some of the injuries you had today? Yeah, I think, uh, Steve, you know, soft tissue injury. Um, Averone's fine. Uh, Happel did not play today, uh, but I he, we expect him back next week. Forsyth, we held him out. He's closer. You guys have heard me say that every week. Uh, but, you know, we're still not quite there. Damon, I think Damon's fine. You know, Damon, it, uh, you know, looked like a stinger or something of that nature. He really threw his body around in there. And it, uh, you know, he, uh, I think he's good. But uh, I think that sums it up, unless you guys got another one on there. Well, that's all I got for you. I know all those uh, folks are have questions for you. I'd like to dig a little deeper into it. So I'll let them take over. And thanks for your time here on the radio. Yes, sir. Thank you. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Thank you. All right, Coach, we'll move on to uh, some questions from the media. Let's start with Ashley Conklin from the Register Guard. Mario, I know you guys have had to mix and match some people on the offensive line, obviously, but what specifically did you see that uh, led you to move TJ Bass to left tackle and uh, along that same line, what do you think of the job Walk has done the last few weeks for you at center? Walk's been off the charts. TJ is very versatile. So is George. You know, sometimes when you run certain things schematically from a man blocking scheme or double team, gap zone, whatever it may be, pin and pull, uh, you just like to see what guys do really, really well. I can't get into all the specifics of why we move guys uh, and the advantages that it gives us, but we felt today that was a really good move, a strong move. It paid off really well for us, so we felt that uh, the assessment was a good one. James Crepe, the Oregonian. Mario, a season high in offense. It starts with your quarterback. You touched on Anthony a little bit, but you got more passing yards than anybody against Colorado. I realize some of it came late, but you, you weren't trying to run it up in the way that you went about it, so... 
your thoughts on just the passing game and, and the running game, the overall production where it's nearly 600 yards of offense? Well, we've been getting better the last couple of weeks in the passing game. I know that Anthony has invested the world in that and his receivers and his offensive line, the running backs as well. I mean, if, if you dig deep into the film, you'll see a guy like Seven McGee early in the game picking up, you know, pressure, a blitzer to provide time to get the ball off and provide a big play, create a first down, an explosive pass. So a lot of credit to Anthony, a lot of credit to the receivers, the old line, the backs, and uh, the coaches put together a really good plan, felt there were some things that we could attack, attacked it really well today. We were really efficient with the ball, and we made plays. When the ball was in the air, those 50-50 balls, we came down with it. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Coach, what has Byron done over the last week or two to, to solidify himself in that number two role? And it's clear you played PN7 in the first half on consecutive drives. What went into kind of getting both those guys in the game early? Oh, and we've never set anyone to two or three or four or five. So I want to make sure that that's clear first and foremost. Um, but he has played really, really well in practice, and so has seven. And that thing was just about a toss-up right before the game. They both uh, equally deserved time, and they both did get time. Byron had some monster runs today. Uh, Seven had some really big ones as well, some really important ones. They're just both, ever since camp, we knew there was enough there to get these guys ready to play this year. The most important thing was getting them to understand all the things that go with this offense, especially protection-wise, right? And then all your duties and obligations in the passing game, you know, to be a complete back and to allow a coordinator to call the game he wants to call, it can't be a uh, can't be pick and choose. You know what I mean? Those guys got to know every single thing, every single concept that's tied into their uh, assignment. And those guys are there right now mentally because they've worked at it. And you saw them. They can get physical. You know, say they, they get a full head of steam. They could they could lower their pads and keep those legs churning. Uh, proud of them. And so lots of areas where those guys could improve. Credit to seven also on the kickoff, you know, force a fumble that we should have gotten. So both those guys, if you watch them, they're really productive on special teams also. Luciano Chatelaine, end zoners. Hey, coach, given that you suffered injuries to three safeties today, adding up to Jordans, do you think you will need to adjust your defensive scheme given your depth at the position for next week's game? Or do you have enough depth to maintain your defensive philosophy with the players you have? And lastly, is there something you probably should be doing different or will start doing different at practice in order to prevent more injuries at the position in the future? Well, you know, the injuries happen in the game, so I don't think there's anything that points to change in the way we practice. Uh, the second part is I think uh, I think looking at our guys, I don't think we're going to lose more than one if one with what happened today. We're very hopeful. But if that's the case, if we do have some guys that cannot play, we'll mix and match and move guys around, guys that have played corner or whatnot to nickel and safety positions but we feel that we have the depth necessary to adjust and move forward. Zach Neal, Duckswire. Coach, not obviously not what you want having to put AB back in the game with the, the lead cut to two, uh, cut to two scores late. Uh, I'm curious what that conversation was like with Ty on the sideline and how you think he responded to that decision. The conversation, well, there's really no conversation to be had. There, all of a sudden, we've let a lot of guys play. And it's a 16 point game and I want to make sure it's a three score game. So Ty's an excellent player. He's done some really good stuff. Yep. Do an interception today. Uh, we don't get down on our players when they don't perform to their capabilities. You know, we just find a way to coach them better and come back. Ty's tough. Ty's an excellent player. He'll bounce back. Can go the Oregonian. Yeah, Mario, you mentioned how well uh, or how much better you thought the offense played and how the defense played well uh, at important points in the game. Do you think you made some sort of statement with this victory? Well, I think we showed that when we were playing our, our, our starters that, and when we play and execute, yeah, we're a really good football team, can be a really good football team. And I think what makes us good is that we know we can get a lot better. That's the best way to put it. It's a hungry driven team. Um, we did some really good things today, some other things that we can do better. Um, I don't, not too concerned about, you know, that, that term style points, we want to play our guys. We want to get our guys ready to go down this home stretch and have them get reps, log reps, get experience playing. So when they do have to play in critical parts of games down the line, that they're ready to play. That was the most important thing. And we did that and still won a game, you know, comfortably. So I think it speaks strongly about us. Uh, you know, we have certainly big goals and expectations, but it all starts with one and zero, and we're right back on that process. 
Tyson Alger, I five quarter. Mario, we, we've seen Anthony get so self-critical on, on on himself throughout the season. After a performance like this one, is he able to like sit back and actually enjoy it? And and or do you have to like get on him a little bit to be like, you played pretty well today, man? The best part about him is he's just very real and very honest. So I don't I don't see any issue. I don't think uh, a great day or not so great day is going to make it move one way or the other with him. He knows he's surrounded by people that appreciate him, love and support him, and that he is uh, he's always willing to go the extra mile for the guys around him. So I don't think uh, I don't think outside noise affects us. I just just doesn't. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Mario, I think Anthony's only incomplete pass of the day that wasn't a dropped ball or a spike was him throwing it in the dirt to on a screenplay. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the overall offense has, has gotten a lot better, specifically with him. He's been really good the last two weeks. Where, where do you feel like that improvement has, has been to allow the type of performances we've seen these two weeks? Oh, well, I mean, time, all right, time, reps, extra time invested. Um, certainly those guys spend a lot of time together after practice, and then they get together at other times. They think, I don't know, but I see them all the time getting the facility late in there, man, getting reps. You know, that's the kind of guys that they are. They're just relentless competitors. Uh, and again, the best part is that they know that we have to get a lot better. They know there's a lot of meat left on the bone, but that I think the coaching staff has poured into it a bunch. I think the offensive linemen continue to step up. The running backs, <clears throat> excuse me, the tight ends, everybody's just uh, the supporting cast continues to elevate their play, which in turn, as Anthony, he continues to elevate his play, his attention to detail, his accuracy, his decision-making, all those things cumulatively add up to better play as an offense. And, but we got to get a lot better and uh, we're looking forward to doing so this week. Jared Denny, Scoop Duck. Hey Mario, I know Brian Adson got a ton of playing time um, with the injuries and everything today, but what did you kind of make of his performance and what has he kind of improved on over the last couple of weeks? I'm of sorry, I missed I miss the first part. Who are you asking about? Oh, Brian Addison. Oh, Brian. Brian's a really unique athlete now. I mean, not many guys that are almost six foot five that can play safety and can play corner as well. The past, I would say, almost three weeks, there's been um, just a marked difference in his approach to preparation, right? Your, your practice preparation will always equal your game reality or something close to it. He's bought into that concept fully. It's paid off in more repetitions and then actual live play success. So, uh, we think that this week, especially with the way and the things that he did today, will generate some more enthusiasm and some more investment by him in the process so that he can have an even better week and just come out next week and have the best game he's had. Time for two more. Antoine Staley, register guard. Hey, Coach, I know obviously you have to watch the film, but just kind of what you thought about the defense there, especially uh, late on in the game. Well, later on in the game, we gave up some points. We're playing a lot of different guys and mixing and matching some parts, which we don't want to do. And the truth of the matter is when we watch the film and we get with our players, we're not going to make excuses. Well, we took out so-and-so or so-and-so wasn't playing baloney. We're not going to make excuses. We're going to grade and coach every single person on the team, whether he's the first guy in or whether he's the fifth guy in. And our guys will take pride in that. They will... To, to play here, you've got to be able to handle the right type of constructive criticism because when you're not playing to a certain level, it comes with a challenge, and a challenge is constructive. A challenge comes with a teachable moment. That's the way we coach. That's the way we approach this, okay? We're teachers, progression teachers. So that's how we want to approach this. So I'm really looking forward to jumping on that film because I did see a lot of guys that were just – inches away from making a big play, but all of a sudden, boom, they bust contain its 25 yard gain or potential sack on a cross blitz. Boom. We miss because we lose our balance and body control because we just get our appetite goes through the roof and we're about to get a sack and we fail to realize we got to come to balance and keep our eyes on those hips. So all those things are great teachable moments that we will jump all over tomorrow and, um, and look forward to getting, you know, our guys just back to work and getting focused on our next opportunity. Last question, James. Mario, I wanted your thoughts on one play in particular because I think it really typified so much of what you're talking about. On the touchdown pass to Troy Franklin, it's third and 10. You leave seven McGee in there to pass block. 
he does successfully against the linebacker just long enough for Anthony to get the throw off to Troy, another freshman over the middle. And you walk through just the various aspects of that play between one true freshman and pass pro for the, and a huge play, another one catching the ball, and your quarterback being able to get the throw off. Yeah, tremendous recognition by him. First, the line making the right call. The quarterback knowing that he's protected, seven for identifying the blitzer. Uh, what we'll be all over him about is, hey, you got to meet that guy at the line of scrimmage. You know, any cushion that you give up to end up in the quarterback's lap, I think he ended up grabbing Anthony's leg as he launched the ball. Um, so everyone found – everyone knew their assignment. Everyone tried to do it at the highest level. That's a perfect example of, all right, seven, now, next time, this is going to happen an extra yard and a half, two yards close to the line of scrimmage. There won't be that distraction of a guy wrapped around Anthony's ankle and the throw comes out cleaner. And then the flip side is Troy finding himself open and then going up and pulling that ball down in traffic because there was lots of hands, lots of bodies over there. So two, uh, two young guys working with an older guy um, that, again, we're counting on all of them. So it's good that those guys actually get some real like live time together and having success doing so. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Congrats on the win. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Be safe out there and go Ducks.